2018 Audi A5 and S5 Cabriolets owe their existence to a little-known car called the Audi Cabriolet, before, which found its way to Australia in 1994. The similarly sized Audi was priced at a whopping $86,990 and the German brand found around 200 buyers in six years who probably now wished they had bought an apartment back then for the same coin. Fast forward to today and the price of the brand new A5 Cabriolet has dropped to $83,490, and if you take inflation into account, the 1994 variant's price would represent $153,000 in today's money. Considering it has absolutely nothing to compare, in terms of specification or equipment to its contemporary offering, any complaints about today's car pricing should cease. The reason for the price comparison isn't necessarily to showcase the car's affordability, more so that two and a bit decades ago, wishing to own an Audi convertible of this stature was a tall order for the majority of Australians. Today though, it's readily accessible to those who seek the lifestyle that such a vehicle brings. Having recently reviewed the Audi A3 Cabriolet and found it somewhat wanting, it was with great anticipation that I jumped into its much larger and classier brother to take a long-winded drive through some of the most spectacular roads South Australia has to offer. First up, I jumped behind the wheel of the base entry model Audi A5 2.0-liter TFSI front-wheel drive. With an on-road price of under $90,000, this is, in our opinion, all you'll need if you're after an A5 convertible. With 140 kilowatts of power and 320 newton meters of torque driving the front wheels, the base model feels perfectly suited to its task as a luxurious and classy convertible. It looks the business and has more than enough grunt to get up and go for everyday tasks. It will rush from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in a respectable 7.9 seconds and, frankly, it's more than quick enough for the type of car that it is. Riding on 18-inch wheels, with our test car shot in Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, also meant a very comfortable package that provided excellent grip around corners. We did not experience any scuttle shake, and were left very satisfied with the overall dynamics of the car, given its power output. That may have something to do with the extra 40% of torsional rigidity compared to its predecessor. Thankfully. The previous generation's continuously variable transmission, CVT, is now long gone, replaced with a far better and more sporty dual-clutch 7-speed system that breathes a lot of life into this new model. Despite the rain and cold, we took the roof off and enjoyed the standard neck-level heating seats that kept our upper body warm, while the seat heaters were turned on to maximum as we plowed through the country roads on offer.